This is the Bears Barroom Radio Network. The following program is recorded live and intended for all audiences. This is the National Football League. You got a bunch of owners who inherit the teams who are members of the Lucky Sperm Club uh, who are trying to negotiate in, in 2018 high tech type of agents. And I, I just think Ted Phillips and Ryan Pace are overmatched. And I think it's bad for the whole football team. And it's a cloud that hangs over the head of the Bears and Matt Nagy and what they want to do. How many times you heard this? I'm going to Vegas. I go, how'd you do? Well, if I lost four grand, but you know, you go there to have fun. No, you go there to win. And that's what's wrong with people. They have the negative mentality in anything they do, including sports, before you even laid the bet down. So you got to be positive. The people that really scare me, the people that can walk in those electric carts. And they go to the slot machine and sit on them. And then they forget that they're supposed to be, you know, crippled from the waist down. Have a bear standing with a towel in his hands, rubbing his crotch. Bear ball washer. What you got to really try to do is money manage and only bet one or two games on a Sunday. That's what we'll be doing on Bear Bar. You're listening to the Mike North Advantage, and it begins right now. That's right, it's the Mike North Advantage, and it does begin right now, right here at MixLR.com. I am Aldo Gandio, Mike Swingman, and we've got plenty to talk about as we've got one game in the books for week one of the NFL and a whole bunch of other games coming up on Sunday and Monday. Mike North, how are you, my friend? Oh, Aldo, are you kidding me? I mean, I should be arrested for feeling this good. And you know what? Welcome to everybody, all the bar flies out there here at Bears Bar Room, bearsbarroom.com. Get me at North to North. Get Aldo at Aldo Gandia. This is what we do. This is what we put down. We're getting ready for the big game. It's coming up this week. And you know what? I got some maybe a few surprises in store for everybody, my friend. You do. I can't wait to hear. I'm a surprise type of guy. That's me. They call me Mr. Surprise! <laughs> well, were you surprised at the quality of football that we saw last night in, in the very first game of the NFL season? No, I, I was surprised by the moaning and groaning on social media. Are you kidding me? You are the same people that are saying don't play the starters. So then when they finally play the starters in the first game of the season, because most starters haven't played at all because the preseason was somewhat of a sham, uh, as far as that goes, but uh, you got to see a lot of other talent. Why is everybody surprised? I mean, Chris Collinsworth couldn't hide it. Al Michaels couldn't hide it. We got a lot of rust. I heard the word rust. And for people that don't think that practice is important, you saw it last night. You saw a bad product. There's really about two or three really good games every week in the NFL, and the rest are average to mediocre, period. End of story. It depends who's, who's the matchups and what have you. But this NFL is built on hype. And then you actually watch the product and you see the below average product like you did see last night. Yeah, I got to tell you that that game, which was uh, the final was Eagles 18, Falcons 12, an odd score. And I think it's indicative of how poorly played that game was. In fact, the Eagles were booed by their home crowd after that first half in which they just scored just three points and managed just 68 yards of offense. And I think, Mike, that this is not just uh, what's going on with how teams are being coached. I think this is part of a growing NFL problem because of the collective bargaining agreement, and they put restraints on how, uh, how often these guys can practice. You know, we no longer have two-a-days. There's limitations on tackling and so forth. The, the product that the NFL is turning out is just really getting worse and worse every year. Look, this is, this is a trend. This, uh, this isn't we see 12 great games every Sunday. Look, expansion is hurt. There's no doubt. There's guys in this league that don't belong in this league. There's guys in the Bears that don't belong in this league. That's a fact, Jack. Most of them do. But the bottom line is when you water down products, I don't care what it is. You know, you could have the Coca-Cola recipe, and you could have it in a vat. And if you add more water to it, it's going to be not as good. It's impossible to have guys now playing that would have been working in the private sector 
had they not expanded and say we have as good a product as we always did, plus the safety rules uh, as far as concerned, not practicing because you're right, Aldo, about the NFL Players Association. Worst thing that ever happened to the players because really what it does, it shortens their career because they're not conditioned. And then when they do get hurt, they got twice as tough a position to get back than they did had they been in shape and being in shape sometimes not causes injuries, but avoids injuries. So you're absolutely right about that. I've been talking about the product. I predicted this product 20 years ago would eventually hit a peak and go down. And, uh, you know, Dan Jenkins at the time, he'll tell you. He laughed. You're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. I'm not crazy. Sooner or later, because if you keep legislating bad products or, or bad rules into bad products and you're afraid people are going to get hurt and you don't play anybody during the, the preseason, my boxing analogy holds forth. You spar every day to be a champ, and these people are not up to their optimum because they don't practice enough. Wow. Uh, you know, and I, I, I totally get what you're, where you're coming from with the players. Stunning, wasn't I, with that uh, little opening there? Yeah, I mean, I think that was like you should run for politics or something like that. Run for office. But I can't. I got too many skeletons in my closet. <laughs> I got about 12 and they got suits. You know what would happen to me. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but you're never right, mind. You're right about the Players Association and that, you know, they're trying to uh, look out, supposedly, for the pl- players' best interests, but they're stepping on themselves. They're tripping all over the place. I mean, back even back in the days when Gene Upshaw was the head of the Players Association, there were stories that he was in cahoots with the owners. He was getting payouts, uh, and this is these are allegations. But he was getting uh, payouts from the uh, owners so that he would uh, uh, give away certain conditions that would hurt the players, but but help Gene Upshaw's uh, 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 wallet. So. It, it, the NFLPA has not it definitely not how the Major League Baseball players players union has do, has done. I mean, they've really looked out for their players in, in baseball. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I think that basically uh, the NFL players, you got former players running it. You had Gene Upshaw, who I don't think now that I'm looking now at what I, at what's happened to the NFL without him around, I think it's not as good. I think Gene Upshaw was a guy that had a Roger Goodell's ear, and once Gene Upshaw died, for some reason, Goodell got dumber to me. So um, I don't know this whole situation. I do know this. Uh, you got to play to be successful. You do not, uh, you know, it's like a, look, I've always said this. Can I bring up something that isn't even pertinent to this, sure. but it's about preparation. Sure. Um, the O.J. trial, the O.J. Simpson trial. They won because they outprepared Marsha Clark and Christopher Darden. They outprepared them. While they, uh, Christopher Darden and, and Marsha Clark, were romping around and not doing their due diligence, <laughs> these people were around the clock. They outprepared them. So when you are prepared, you are going to win. And I hope to God, the Bears and the Packers are two teams that we're going to see this Sunday night. They had very light, light schedules for the starters. Very light schedules for the starters in preseason. Back in uh, my 20s, I directed a film with Al McGuire, the former head coach of the Marquette Warriors basketball team. Great guy, team. great friend. Yeah, and he said, uh, remember the P's. Uh, uh, proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. The six P's is what he called it, and that's something that's always stuck in my head. You have to be prepared for everything in life in order to succeed. Now, of course, and I'll tell you this about Al McGuire real quick, Al. Though sure. I uh, had uh, a lunch with Al one time. Me and him were sitting in a Las Vegas restaurant, and he says to me, "You know, Mike, I'll tell you what." The problem nowadays is the kids, you got to you go in there and you got to teach them manners. You got to teach them how to eat with a fork. Mm-hmm. You got to, you know, teach them when they, when they get to you, they don't even know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. He goes, he, the, he says it was a breakdown of the parents in a lot of cases. And as he was telling me about that, he was eating a salad with his fingers <laughs> uh, that, and cream garlic. So he's talking to me about table manners and he's doing that. He also told me a real man. Like, for instance, Aldo, have you ever taken a leak in the shower? Uh, <laughs> I have to admit I have. 
I'm sorry. He says if you've never taken a leak in the shower, you still have time. Because if you haven't by this time, you're not a real man. I'm proud <laughs> to say I'm a he-man. I'm a he-man. Okay. The secret's out. <laughs> I'm a super he-man. <laughs> you are. You should get a costume with a cape. <laughs> P-man. <laughs> he-man. That, that's our new show. The he-man. <laughs> well, to my North Advantage. Oh, by the way, brought to us by the fine folks at Fredoliac Law Group. Uh, check them out, folks. Go to the website. Just type it in. Google it in. You got Peter Verdoliak. Uh, you got the, the Verdoliak Law Group, which has uh, offices all over the country. This podcast goes all over the country. We've got a lot of people. Follow Verdoliak Law Group at the law firm that gets it done. Uh, just check it out. It's V-R-Y-D-O-L-Y-A-K. I can't believe I got it right. Pete Verdoliak, man, he's the best. So take care of them. And also, Eldo, mm-hmm. don't just watch the game this Sunday. And we'll talk more about these guys later. Play the game and win ten grand. Ten. Right here. Yes. With Bet Chicago. Download the Bet Chicago app and play today. Ten thousand dollars. All you guys in the basement. This is your big chance. Absolutely. And they they've got a great website at BetChicago.com. So oh, definitely. Un- unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. It is nice stuff. They're gonna be the big thing with the gambling coming up in Illinois here at Bet Chicago. Boom. Yeah. All right, uh, before you lay down bets. I'm exhausted. Can I take a break? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, sorry. We got 45 more minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. It seems like only yesterday. <laughs> All right. Be, uh, talking about preparation, uh, apparently the yeah. Packers have been using some Akeem Hicks quotes as motivation for this week, which is hilarious because if anyone listened to what Akeem Hicks was telling the Green Bay Packers media, he was clearly joking. Khalil Mack was next to him as Akeem Hicks was on an audio conference call with the Packers and he was just pulling uh, chains and poking Khalil Mack by talking about how great he is. I got a little bit of a clip for you and then I want to ask you, uh, do you think that Akeem Hicks, this strategy may have backfired on Akeem Hicks? Okay, so here's the audio. Akeem, the, the Packers had a lot of injuries on their offensive line, so there were a lot of rotating going on. What, what do you know about the five that you'll see on Sunday? I know those five guys can't block Leo Matt. <laughs> <laughs> the starting right tackle for the Packers, Brian Bulaga, is coming off a, a torn ACL. We always talk about you know targeting players with injuries or you know trying to take advantage of guys that have been out for a while. Well, I, I think it affects guys, you know, when they come back from an injury, especially you know older guys like Balaga, but I don't think he had a chance to block Khalil Mack in the first place. When you see a group that has not played together during the preseason, um, is that a sign of weakness, do you think? You know, I, I really feel like this. You know, they, they have to put their offensive line together however they do it um, and, um, you know, put their best product out on the field. But I don't think their best product can block Khalil Mack. <laughs> now, you hear Khalil Mack laughing in the background because as when the interview started, Akeem said, Khalil is with me, right next to me. And so he was clearly, clearly having some fun. But... The media is, is is leaving all of that out. They're saying, you know, Akeem Hicks is giving the Packers bulletin board mm-hmm. material and so forth. What do you think about this? You think this may backfire on Akeem? Of course, it could backfire if he gets stopped, but I like the the, the boldness. I'm a bold guy, as you know. Mm-hmm. I, I think that uh, to be up front is a good thing. Uh, Khalil Mack laughing. Look, it's a game of football. They understand it. Uh, you know, there's going to be chirping going on. I do know this, that when uh, the Bears play the Packers in the opener or when they have success early with new coaches, they, the Bears have won. I mean, Mark Trestman won. Uh, Lovey Smith won his first game against the Bears. John Fox. Mm. So, so, you know what, you're looking at coaches, and, and, and Matt Nagy may win this week. Matt Nagy may win this week, and Akeem Hicks may have a big day, and Khalil Mack may have a big day. And, and I'll just caution Bear fans. This has happened before with, with a guy like Trestman who didn't even last 30 games. Mm. We thought it was going to be Nirvana after beating Green Bay. Well, if the Bears beat Green Bay this week, everybody's going to think they're going to win 12 games. I would caution everybody <laughs> because, you know what, there, there, there is some trash talking going on. I even heard the Green Bay receiver, I don't know which guy it was, who said, was trying to comment, or it was a corner, trying to comment, Eldo, mm-hmm. on Trubisky. Mm-hmm. And he says, I don't know if people saw it on Twitter, well, 
you know, I'll tell you, he's one of those guys. He's a, a guy that, and uh, he goes, really, guys? I don't know. I have nothing on him. So maybe there's a method to this madness of hiding everything because last year, if you remember the first game, mm-hmm. Tariq Cohen shocked the NFL. Yes. yes. Nobody knew about him. He had been hidden for the most part in preseason, and then he showed up that day. So I'm expecting maybe an ambush, to be honest with you. Well, that would be nice. I love ambushes, especially when we're doing the ambush. Who doesn't except Custer? <laughs> That's right. Now, yeah. here's, a, here's a word of warning, though, from Vic Fangio regarding Khalil Mack's presence on the football team. Uh, uh, Fangio was asked by the Chicago media, what can Khalil Mack provide this defense? And this is what Vic Fangio said. Anytime you get a player of his ability, it can do nothing but help make you better, helps make the players around him better. But he's been the same player in Oakland throughout his career, very well decorated and a lot of honors that he deserved. You know, in Oakland was never better than mid-20s in the defense, so one guy doesn't make a whole unit. Uh, It's pretty evident by that. I think that's a great quote because that is true. I mean, I think the Packers, excuse me, the Raiders' pass defense last year was 27th, and this is with Khalil Mack. Now, what his point, of course, is, is you need 11 players out there, and so let's not, you know, go too crazy. Let's see how he blends in with this, the other guys on this team and uh, the other guys, Kyle Fuller and, and Eddie Jackson and Adrian Amos and, and Prince of Mukamara in the backfield, defensive backfield. Those guys have got to create the turnovers now that Khalil Mack is going to be hurrying the quarterback, right? Look, I, I think the problem that everybody is ignoring here is the offense. That's what we're looking at because I'll give everybody this. Um, the year that Khalil Mack uh, won Defensive Player of the Year, Derek Carr was third in MVP voting. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So on the other side of the ball, you know, um, they had a player that was of the ilk of Khalil Mack called Derek Carr. Mitch Trubisky is not the player that's on the ilk of Khalil Mack. There's nobody on the offense that, that really can say, I'm your equal. Derek Carr in Oakland could say, I'm your equal. No doubt in my mind, it's a great, great pickup for the Chicago Bears. We've been through this. We've done it. But last year, they finished 20th overall in defense. Mm-hmm. 20th with Khalil Mack. So I would caution everybody, like Eldo saying, look, it's like having Wilbur Marshall without Otis Wilson. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yep. You're going to, you had nowhere to go. You had Singletary in the middle. You had Wilson on the right. You had um, uh, Marshall on the left. Mm -hmm. Now you got Khalil Mack on the right, or move him around. Mm -hmm. But if they can guess where he's going to be, if they don't try to disguise things, if he's just going to rush from one side, where are we going if I'm the Green Bay Packers? Away from him. Now, now they may try to run at him early, and he may get some stops. Uh, I think Green Bay is going to try to stay away from him. But you're right, Aldo. This, the Bears' defense, you think Oakland's defense was bad? At, at times last year, the Bears' defense was a bend but couldn't break. Um, oh, by the way, the year that they were defensive, uh, he was defensive player of the year. They ranked, they weren't, they, they had 30 turnovers. Mm. They had 30 turnovers. Mm. That's what you got to do. Yep. If you're playing 16 games and you have 30 turnovers as a defense, I think you're winning most of those games. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, and you, I'm on my game right now. You are. I'm in a rhythm that I cannot believe. <laughs> I feel like a stare right now on the fifth take. When, when you played basketball, Mike, because uh, I know you're an avid, you were an avid yep. basketball player, when you got into that zone, did you just yell at your teammates, give me the ball, give me the ball? When I wasn't in the zone, I yelled him, give me the ball, <laughs> give me the ball. A shooter, a scorer, is that exactly what he is? And uh, you know what? That's what, exactly what you got to believe in. I had mostly good days. I played at Truman College, played on their basketball team. After I got my GED, you, know, you want to talk about a, an educated man. You're, you're talking to one right now. I was a valedictorian of my summer school class, for God's sake. That's how many times I went. Excellent.
Excellent. All right, you were talking about uh, running away from Khalil Mack and uh, Tom Silverstein of the Milwaukee. Say hi to your partner. He just got dumber. <laughs> Tom Silverstein of the Milwaukee <laughs> Journal asked the run game coordinator, offensive line coach James Campen about a 2015 game between the Packers and the Raiders. And Tom pointed out that in that game, the strategy of the Packers was to stay away from Khalil Mack. And it led to right. kind of an uncomfortable moment between the reporter Tom Silverstein and James Camp. And I got a little clip here. Let me play that. You take out of the oh, 15 game against the Raiders. You know, he didn't have a huge impact, but you stayed away from him, too, quite a bit in that game. We, Mack, I'm talking about. We stayed away from him? Yeah, you mm-hmm. ran away from him. A lot of short drops. If you call it 15? Huh? That's a long time ago, Tom. Come on, you've been watching that That's a team. long time ago. You know you've been watching that, too. I don't even remember that game. It's a competitive advantage, Tom. You know that. Anything else? Are you asking me if he's a good player, Tom? Uh, Is that what you're no, asking I'm, me? I'm asking you he's what a you really, really him. good football player. What you learned from yeah. that game? That he still is even a better football player than he was from that game. Seriously. I mean, he's a better football player then, you know, now than he was then. Mike, they sound afraid of Khalil Mack. They really do. Well, they should be. Look, you should be. Look, I, I, I got a kick out of Mike Greenberg. I hate, to be, I hate to beat him up every week, but I watch his show. I struggle through it just to hear his ridiculousness. <laughs> uh, I heard him say that Khalil Mack's not worth the money. And uh, I will tell everybody this. You've got to have a memory uh, when you, before you open your mouth. You really do. Reggie White, in 1993, folks, was signed for $17 million. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take you back. That's 25 years ago. $17 million for a defensive end, not even a linebacker. Changed the culture of the Green Bay Packers, mm-hmm. and they went on to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. And they had a guy that could stare at Brett Favre, and Brett Favre could stare at them. Just like Derek Carr can stare at Khalil Mack, and Khalil Mack can stare at him. Bottom line. Also, the Chicago Bears lost a guy named Wilbur Marshall in 19, I think, 86, 87. They won the Super Bowl when they got him. You don't get rid of superstars, and you have to pay superstars, regardless, children, in this little kid's corner for everybody, of how talented you are or what side of the ball you play on. You have to pay the stars. And Khalil Mack is worth the money, especially, I'm tired of draft picks. I'm tired of draft picks not panning out. And that's why this was a good deal. And anybody that thinks a defensive superstar is not worth the money, is, 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 it hasn't been watching the game, period. Because they can change it in a nut. In, in a, now I'm not saying he's going to do it, but I, I'll tell you something, Eldo, because now I'm hot. I, 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 I saw a game where he, I look back, he had five sacks in one game in 2015. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what really woke me up to him? He had 15 or 16 that year. That means in the other 15 games, he had 11. You know, there's been other players that have had five sacks or three, four sacks in one game, and then you look 15 games later, they got nine for the year. They have their one game, they blow their load, and that's it. That is not Khalil Mack. Wow, awesome. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> Excuse me. You got me all choked up there. <laughs> You're all fired the right, up. The, you know, I'm, a, I'm an emotional speaker. <laughs> all right, well, let's... Lincoln let's... would have a problem with me. I cut in. <laughs> let's talk... score this, pal. <laughs> let's talk about a player who has not proven his value yet, uh, uh-huh. but everybody is expecting him to be an outstanding player, and that is rookie Roquan Smith. Now, Smith... Has not played in a college, and has not played in a football game since that college football national championship game back in January eighth of two thousand eighteen. So he hasn't played in nine months. What are your wow. expectations for Roquan Smith in this game? It's clear that he's going to get some snaps. He, he may, maybe he's on a snap count, maybe to twenty, thirty, or so forth. What are your expectations? Well, my expectations are limited play. Maybe, hopefully, he'll make a tackle or two. If he does anything better than that for the first game, I'll be absolutely thrilled. I know that the Bear media will make, like, if he makes a tackle, like, uh, you know, the greatest thing on earth. I mean, this is the same group, along with the Bears coaches, who, were, you know, me and Doug Buffon, we did, a, we did an experiment one time because we knew that the, the, the media and the public loved their locker. Mm-hmm. And the coaches did, too. And... I said the dog, it was like game six. I forget which season it was. I'm not going to get into that. 
I said, Doug, I'm going to count the tackles for the next game that Urlacher makes. And then you count the tackles the same way. He goes, that's fine, little buddy. I counted, well, really, this went on for, for a few weeks after that. And let me just say this. The tackles that we counted were not the same that the Bears coaches gave him the next day. For instance, I had one game six and Doug had five. You know how many ga- tackles they gave Urlacher in that game? Double digits. The Bears had tw- Twelve. <laughs> yeah, I figured that. Yes. Okay. I had, I had another game where I had four tackles by Urlacher. Mm-hmm. Okay. And two assists. Okay. Four and two. They ended up nine and three. <laughs> and I, Doug and I would be almost in line. And then the coaches would say, well, we watched the film. So in my world, a lot of Brian Urlacher's tackles are mythical. Yeah. Period. End of story. But they loaded him up. And if they're kind of real constant, they'll make him a superhero if he has one big hit or something like that. And that won't be bad. At least he'll get on the field. But I don't even know if he's going to get on the field. Yeah, I think he will. I, I, I'll be surprised. If, if he doesn't, it's because the hamstring is, is bothering him. But I, I got a feeling that he'll, he'll be in on some special packages. I can't believe then that they didn't play him once. <laughs> Heart 4803 says that. But you I, should be in the press box and tallying up the tackles. <laughs> I can't believe that they played him not one time if his hamstring's ready to go. One time. Yeah. Yeah. They were afraid. They're cautious. Cautious loses in the in, in, in the end run. In the end run, cautious. You got to throw caution to the wind if you're going to win championships and get into the playoffs. That is one of the major storylines going into this week one. Is will this cautious approach by head coach Matt Nagy will it pay off, or will we see some sloppy football like we saw on Thursday night with established teams? Those were veterans out there. You know, this wasn't Mitch Trubisky. You know, who who is a young guy. These this is uh, Matt Ryan and uh, Nick Foles, guys who have got a lot of NFL games under the belt who just did not look good. And so uh, I'm a little bit concerned whether Matt Nagy's cautious approach is going to pay dividends. We shall see. It's going to be interesting. Well, I'll tell you this. I saw last night, and this was the thing. The thing that was rusty was the coaching staff. Mm-hmm. I mean, Steve Sarkeesian was horrible. They didn't throw the ball. He took Julio Jones out. They said, Julio Jones, wait a minute. What kind of athlete do you, are you? You sell yourself on being a superstar athlete. And then I got to listen to Chris Collinsworth tell me, well, shucks, you know what? I think what happened is because he made three catches on that drive, when they got to the end zone, quite frankly, they said, you know, he said, I need a break. Wait a minute. So now you're going to blame Sarkeesian, but then you just said that the player – ran off saying, I'm tired, and you, and you sell these guys as superhuman? I mean, if you're a gamer, you got to be in. So I don't know what happened there, but they didn't score, and then they pass up points on the road. Mm-hmm. So the coaching staffs, I think, are going to be rusty. Here's where I think Nagy's got a shot. I think we're in maybe for an ambush here. Mm-hmm. I think maybe the Bears, I feel strongly, it's more, and it was before the Khalil Mack. We haven't seen the starters. But really, Green Bay, do we know what their defense can do? Seriously, nobody knows. Nobody knows what these teams are going to do, and they're getting a ton of points, the Bears. I'm being straight up. Have you heard anybody say, Aldo, uh, Bears are going to win? Anybody in America? Mm-hmm. No. Have you? No, not, not anyone, no. <laughs> not, not even me. I was on a Packers podcast. I said the answer. I asked you a question. I was just waiting for a, a reply. I think you were dozing off with my soliloquy, <laughs> no, to be honest. I was reading what John Santucci. Well, I was Santucci. worried about you. I thought you had a seizure for was, a second. That's me. I was reading John Santucci. You know what they call me, Mr. Concern? Well, yeah, you're reading the, the computer. I know. It's it's the biggest trap you could fall into. <laughs> it really is. But it I, is. It's like walking, going, everything's good, and then you go, look at these branches, and then you fall into a hole, and there's spears at the bottom. <laughs> I've got some stories for for you. Um, All right, go ahead. John Santucci asks, why hasn't the addition of Mac moved the line much in that Bears Packers game? Because defensive players don't really move lines. Really? Maybe a Taylor, a Lawrence Taylor in his prime could move a line a little bit. Deion Sanders once in a while, maybe, but it's it's really the teams. They know, and that's what's the concern. Uh, it's a Sunday night game. Uh, but the Bears, when I, like I said before, first-time coaches usually have success early 
Philly against Green Bay. Nobody knows what Nagy's going to do. The line's not moving because they're getting money on both sides, quite frankly, right now, or they're happy with where the line is. It was seven. It's moved to seven and a half, so they got early Green Bay money. Or the odds makers decided to uh, uh, basically – Keep it where it's at. Sometimes they'll move lines just to give you the deception that the teams are going one way or the other. And you can keep track of these lines, by the way, by going to Bet Chicago, kicking off the 2018 football season by giving away Aldo ten grand. As you know, Chicago takes on Green Bay this Sunday, and anyone, and this should be for all the bar, barflies who go six for six in Bet Chicago Sunday night contest, will get a share. Listen to this of ten grand. All you have to do is download the Bet Chicago app. Or go to BetChicago.com, enter your picks to play, and it's completely free. It's no risk or reward. So why not play? Don't just watch the game Sunday night. Play the game and win some cash with Bet Chicago. So I think there's maybe an ambush here. I think the Bears, I'm not going to give the picks yet, but there's going to be traditionally on opening day three shockers. Three shockers. Last night wasn't a shocker. I had Philadelphia last night. It wasn't a shocker to me. Uh, they were only given one point. So that was not a shocker. But you know as well as I do, when you're playing as many games in the NFL, and you, they're all professionals, and like I've always said, they all get checks, um, there's going to be three or four shockers. Mm. Well, let's hope we've got a shocker here. But I'll tell you one thing that uh, is working against the Bears is this stat line. Aaron Rodgers is 8-1 against the Bears at Lambeau Field. He has a 24-4 to touchdown-to-interception ratio. This according to the Chicago Tribune. The way the Bears beat uh, Aaron Rodgers in that one game at Lambeau, the John Fox uh, debut there, was... Uh, Rodgers attempted 43 passes that night with only four resulting in a gain of 15 yards or longer. So they stopped the big play. And so that's something that we have to look at with this Bears defense, with Vic Fangio scheming. They've got to somehow stop the big play. And one thing that is working against the Packers is their wide receivers. I mean, outside of Devontae Adams, I think they might be starting Geronimo Allison, who the kid from Illinois or Illinois State. Um, with the release of Jordy Nelson, I know that you were not uh, you were a critic of that move by by the absolutely Packers. you got to have his guy with him even if he's a little slowed down. You know, I just think that basically you got a team, but they're saying the same thing about our guys, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. about our receivers. Well, I, I think they, there's uh, there's been improvement in the wide receiver ranks, but yeah, who knows what these guys are going to do? We haven't seen them much. Anthony Miller. I like the Alan kid. Adams. I'm going to tell you the kid they've been hiding. You know who's going to be the Tariq Cohen? Okay. Who's who? the big kid? Huh? Who, uh, I'm going to guess Anthony Miller, the second round draft pick. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the kid, and I'll tell you why. When you play the wide receiver position, the one thing that sets these guys apart is one thing hands mm -hmm. they can all jump they can all run hard they can all do their routes but when you can throw the ball in certain spots and that guy comes down with them that's the guy that i think is going to surprise people this coming week and i think the guy that i'm curious about is Allen Robinson because I think Allen Robinson to me if they had to do all over again I'm not saying it's going to be a bad pickup but if they knew what this rookie and I think this rookie is going to be a stud and I think they do too I think Nagy knows that and I think you could see it even in the preseason they got him off the field as soon as he produced like that I, he was the wild guy mm -hmm. in preseason besides Ryan Nall. Yeah. Okay. he was the wild guy Robinson hasn't been, he's been a no-show guy. So I think this kid's very important for Sunday. I agree, and uh, I'll throw in Trey Burton, the uh, tight end they got from the Philadelphia Eagles. I think he's going to mm -hmm. be Mitch Trubisky's best friend. He's going to be catching lots of stuff over the middle. I think the Packers are going to have some difficulty figuring out, well, because there's no tape. They just they don't know who they're going to throw out there. The Bears. Are, so that's going to work in, in favor of the Bears. I hope we run the ball, but see... I hope we win 6-3 to three and let people be mad that Nagy didn't open it up. Uh, I, I hope the Bear defense takes things under control. I hope we get a couple turnovers, and I hope we upset this team. 
I, I really do because, uh, you know what, when you start hearing players say, like this past week, more than one, this is the tone setter. This game's huge. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of pressure to put on a young team that did practice during, during the preseason. Don't forget, Green Bay has a lot of experience on their side, so these guys have gelled together before. You've got 22 starters. A lot of them haven't even played together before. So when one guy – I don't think it's a tone setter because they've beaten Green Bay before, granted at home sometimes, and then it went downhill from there. Uh, so I, I, I think you can lose and come back and win four or five games in a row. I think it depends how you play. If, if Bear fans are going to stomp their feet – and they lose 21 to 20. I think we better look at the whole context and how did the Bears perform in that game? And I would say if it's 21 20, 24 21, 26 20, I would say that we'd be favorable next week, Aldo saying the Bears didn't play a bad football game. And if they win, then you know what? Who needs practice? That's what's going to be the big deal coming up. Who needs practice, you know? <laughs> well, Hart 40, 4803 says that Sunday night's game, win or lose, uh, will not determine the bear season. It's about the Agreed. process of getting better week to week. Agreed. Um, and I mean, what I mean, I want to see them win. But if they go to Green Bay, at Green Bay, and you just read Rogers' record, mm-hmm. and they make this game close. And oh, wait, I'm a winning guy. I like to win everything I do. Mm-hmm. I got a pretty good record. I go in, in whatever I do. I try to try to do two or three, three things in my life really good because I was a screw-up and the other 2,000 things. So, so you try to concentrate. If these guys have been as good in practice as Matt Nagy said, where they could have a week off in the preseason without even playing, then there's a shot here. Maybe there's something we don't know. Maybe we finally found a guy that gets it. But if they lose like 30 to 3... All hell is going to break loose. You know that as well as I do. I I do. I, you know what? I, what I think it's interesting too that wouldn't it to, to your point? I give you so much content. You do. I? I mean, you, my brain is just firing up. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it be something if uh, if Matt Nagy decided I'm going to give the ball to Jordan Howard 30 times in this game? Would, I want that. Wouldn't that be something? That would. I want to have the a football. Fan of football. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> I want. I wanted to. I want the team formation. They screwed it up. I, I don't know what Ryan all did. Look, here's what I think the Bears should always do. Mm-hmm. Tell their players before the camp, no matter how hard you play, no matter what you do, I'm favoring these 22 guys because I predicted this on the show last week. Mm-hmm. You were here. You heard it. I said, I'm worried for Ryan Nall because they play politics. Mm-hmm. And guess what they played? Politics. There's no reason that he should not be in that backfield for some of the action next week. Do None. You, None whatsoever if you base it on performance. But the Bears play favorites. Do you think, and this, this is something that draft Dr. Phil was talking about earlier in the week on one of our shows, do you think mm-hmm. that they kept Mike Burton the fullback because he's Mitch Trubisky's roommate and they didn't want to upset the karma with Mitch and so forth? They wanted to keep him happy? No, I'm not going to say that. I think that um, if you're going to be mad about that, wow, you know, you're going to let that throw you off your game. Yeah. And if you're going to keep guys because they're friends with the quarterback, that's the wrong reason. Absolutely. And now, now baby Burton's a better blocker. No, baby Burton, not. they want the better impressions. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell all Bear fans, there was no excuse, and I don't want to hear, well, nobody else picked them up. And There was no excuse for what we saw in the preseason mm-hmm. from him that he's not on this team. Yep. I and none at all, except they play favorites. Right. They had their 22 starters after week one. It's ridiculous. Right. It's ridiculous, period, end of story. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that worries me. We don't know what's going on uh, in, uh, behind the scenes with locker room talk and how the coach is communicating with players and so forth, but when you get down to these cut-down days, you can really lose a locker room when you're cutting players who deserve to be on a football team. Other players will see that and say, what the hell is going on? So I hope that Matt Nagy is handling this and how he's communicating with players and he's satisfying their 
uh, concerns about uh, whether the team is playing favorites or, or doing poor player evaluation. That, that's a topic. That's, they played favorites by having the starters named right away. This was a football yeah. team that won five games. Right. You don't play favorites like that. When Mike Ditka came to this team, he said, listen, everybody's job's in jeopardy. Then he saw Ricky Watts, who was a receiver at the time, not a bad football player, out of UNLV, I believe he was, number 80, who was jogging through prep. And then Dick, he came and his stuff was out of the locker. Dick got rid of him right away. That don't happen here. <laughs> you got this job. I don't even know you. But, I, you know, you played last year. Yeah, you're a veteran. And you don't have to fight for your job. Are you kidding me? But here's what I hope. I hope they run the football. Hope they control the clock. Here's what I'm going to say. If the Bears have the ball 35 minutes or longer in a 60-minute game, they win. If they don't, they lose. Heart 4803 says that you are a null ball washer. <laughs> I love it. Air Jair, 54, says Mike Burton would be a world champion bullfighter. Ole! <laughs> All I'm saying is I'm not taking anything against them. I go by performance. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, saw that. I saw this team with a guy named Josh McCown make a march to the playoffs. Oh, yeah. And they were 3-2. and two, And as soon as Cutler was ready to come back, they brought him back. Mm-hmm. They didn't keep the hot hand. They got up from the poker table, put, it, put somebody else to sit in their place, and they lost. It, I, I, I've been watching the Bears longer th- th- than these guys were even around. Who's, who are these ball watchers? Please, I need to know. <laughs> I love it. All right, Mike, people tune into the show to listen to your sports betting tips. I think yes. it's time for us to do some picking. Now, how do you want to do this? Do you want to go through every game? Because your strategy for betting is to bet one or two games on Sunday. Now, do you want to give us one or two, or do you want to go Well, what I'll do is I'll go over every game, but I'm not picking every game. Okay. Okay? All right. I can do this really quick. This is what I do. I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. Nobody's better at handicapping than I am. In fact, on this show, and if you look at my free picks on Twitter also, I was 2-0 last week with Wisconsin in the under, right off the bat with this show. Mm. And then I was 2-1 with the free picks during the week. I'm 4-1 and one right now in my last five games. So, I, I mean, look, I'm not even going to keep a tally. That's how good I am. Babe Ruth looked at the end of the year to see how many homers he got, okay? He didn't carry. I'm going to hit more than anybody else. I'm going to win more than anybody else. And this is brought to you by the fine folks at Verdoliac Law Firm, Verdoliac Law Group. Check them out. I got to tell you, I had Philadelphia last night. Pittsburgh at Cleveland, be careful. The hype at Cleveland is the hype. Uh, although that Super Bowl champions usually get because they've been on hard knocks. Be careful of that game. If, and I'm just going to say if, it doesn't count. I was going to pick them. I'd probably go Pittsburgh. Minnesota, San Francisco, quite frankly, an even game. I think that Tony Garoppolo uh, may run into a buzzsaw. Minnesota is a good defensive football team, but they have a change at the top. They have uh, Kirk Cousins now, big game for him. So, uh, you know, Minnesota, San Francisco, San Francisco's getting six and a half. Maybe one unit for Minnesota, but I'm not picking it. But I go light for anybody else. Indianapolis, Cincinnati, uh, Andrew Luck. Cincinnati's had a good preseason. They've done very, very well. I'd probably lead Cincinnati. Uh, Baltimore, Buffalo, Joe Flacco, Buffalo. Uh, Peterman's the new quarterback over there. Forget about it. Uh, if I was going to be a betting man on this, I'd probably go uh, with Baltimore getting uh, the touchdown and a half. All right, here's a pick. Are you ready? You're going, right. Jesus, Mike, would you please go give us a damn pick? <laughs> that's that's all we care about. We don't. That's why I do the 30-second narrative on each game. Because really, at the end of the day, everybody's listening now going, would you please give us a pick? Okay. <laughs> Build the suspension. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Um, I'm high in the New York Giants. Now, maybe I'm high, and maybe I'm high in the New York Giants. Maybe I'm both be- for liking them so much. Um, I just think you give Eli Manning a running back, a little play action, Odell Beckham. Uh, I see where Jacksonville, though, with that tough defense, is uh, giving the New York Giants three at New York. Uh, you got to base that off last year. You know, Bortles got a yard in his belt. They went through the preseason pretty healthy, as everybody else did. I think Barkley averages over four a game. I think Beckham scores a touchdown. I think the New York Giants 
uh, win. This is my first pick uh, of, of this uh, day. The New York Giants, right now, I have getting uh, three points. Right. It may go to three and a half by that time, Aldo. So New York is my first pick. Do you like that pick? I think that's a great pick. The uh, Jaguars are having all sorts of issues with their wide receivers. Um, and Blake Bortles is not a very good quarterback to begin with. If the Giants can stop that running game of the Jaguars, I think I think that's a really intriguing pick. I like that pick. Now, you know what? And, and remember, folks, try to keep them to two or three. You know, And here's another thing. If I like a game a lot, I'll tell you. I'll say put five units on it. If I don't like a game, put one unit on it. When I like, what I say is if I don't like a game as much but it's still strong to me, but I, th- I still think there's a chance it could go the other way, do one unit. It's like $500 or $100. You have to have discipline. Next game, New Orleans and Tampa Bay. New Orleans minus nine and a half. I wouldn't do anything in this game. I don't know what Tampa Bay is capable of. Jameis Winston got the suspension. Uh, New Orleans, nine and a half. I mean, my first inclination would be New Orleans. I'd stay away from this game. New England against the Houston Texans. J.J. Watts back. Uh, Watson, they got a year under belt. I mean, New England, people are waiting for them to fall. It's at New England. Minus six and a half. This is my second pick. I'm taking the New England Patriots, minus the six and a half. I just think first game, uh, they're always on a mission because of their quarterback. Uh, I think Watson's coming back from an injury. That's something that uh, you have to consider, folks. Uh, Watts coming back from an injury. So you got your two main players in their first game where they didn't really practice all that much during the preseason. And they're playing at New England with Tom Brady and that group. With a bunch of receivers that got pretty good hands, I'm taking New England now, though. What do you think of that pick? Well, I, you know, this is a mystery to me because I, Deshaun Watson... So is gambling. <laughs> yeah, how about it? Uh, no, to, to me, you never know. Yeah. I mean, the NFL's the toughest thing going. That is the mystery of all the leagues. The NFL, I've said this, I do great with college, baseball, hockey. I kick everybody's butt. The NFL is a different story. It it's is. tougher. It's, it's a lot tougher, and, and what makes this game particularly tough for me is Deshaun Watson. I mean, everybody talks about his great rookie year. With, it's abbreviated because of the injury, but he, the guy turns the ball over, and a Bill Belichick coach... Uh, New England Patriots, are they going to figure out a way to create turnovers off of of Deshaun Watson? I mean, I'm wrong about the guy. I didn't think he was going to be a good NFL quarterback, and he's proven me wrong so far, but yet he still has the problem of turning over that ball, and so I'm a little concerned. But I would ask you this, Handsome. He had 19 (laughs) touchdowns and seven interceptions before he got hurt last year. That's a full season for Mitch Trubisky, and and then he got hurt. So it wasn't like he was turning the ball. By the way, the year, his senior year, he had 17 interceptions. I'm with you 100% on that. I mean, let's face it, they play 11 games. They played Alabama, don't beat them, but I'm with you on that. But he threw 42 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So, So I think he's pedigree. I just think it's too much to chew on for the first game. Yeah. I think they beat a lot of teams uh, opening up. Uh, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm going to take the Pats minus the six and a half. Now you got Tennessee minus one and a half at Miami. This is the I don't give a damn ball. <laughs> oh, by the way, put one unit. We're going to do it this way. Okay. Put 100 jelly beans mm-hmm. on the New York Giants, 100 jelly beans on the New England Patriots. We're going we're gonna to do it like a money structure deal and see how everybody does by the end of the year. Love it. Now, uh, uh, Tennessee and Miami, I could care less. My favorite game of the week Ooh. is the L.A. Chargers at minus three and a half play in Kansas City with that rookie quarterback, Pat Mahomes, who yeah. against the Bears, I thought, Chase Daniel, we outplayed him. Right. I didn't think that. Pat, did Pat Mahomes knock your shoes off when you saw him against the uh, Bears? I was disappointed. I had Pat Mahomes as my favorite quarterback coming out of that draft, and he looked not too good. Okay. But when it comes to disappointment, mm-hmm. who is the king of disappointment? Phillip Rivers. Mm-hmm. The San Diego or L.A. Chargers. Right. They play. They, they move. They, they're in disarray. Why, uh, Rivers didn't even want to come here to begin with or there to begin with. He said, I want to stay in San Diego. Mahomes has looked bad. 
This is my 500 unit play. Whoa! 500 jelly beans jelly on beans. Kansas City plus three and a half hoof just looks so so. I think Mahomes comes out and shocks the world. Denver at Seattle, good game. Seattle's lost its effectiveness. They're plus three. At Denver, enter at your own risk. Carolina minus three versus the Dallas Cowboys. Now, this game here, only because it's Dallas, only because that's the kind of guy I am. I'm willing to stick my neck out. Uh, but I'm not going to stick my neck out so people lose, okay? I'm not that type of guy. I'm looking at Carolina, and I'm not going to I'm not gonna bet the game. I just want to know, I'll ask you, when you think the Cal- Carolina Panthers, do you ever think they're going back to the Super Bowl again or they're going to get that close again? No, I, I, I definitely I don't. don't. Absolutely not. Not with that quarterback. I just don't have faith in him. Well, here's who you could have faith in. You got Arizona at Washington. Listen to this. Washington's got a, a new quarterback in town. Arizona is Arizona. It's one point. I don't give a damn. That's my I don't give a damn game because you know what? The game that might is going to encompass my whole first week is on Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Minus the seven and a half against the Chicago Bears. If you want to win a hundred on Green Bay, which is the game. Like if you say, Eldo, you know, Mike. And by the way, can I just say this? I could have played for your paid for your plumbing if you took my picks last uh, this past week. <laughs> I should have. I should have bet on those. <laughs> I mean, you, what did you, you get? A new drain co- cover? What happened? Well, we put did in you buy a, new, a mat? What happened? We put in a new toilet and a new sink. I was four and one. You put five hundred on each game. You're you're home free. You got a new. And who knows? You might buy. A, you take the wife to dinner for a change. I mean, something new. <laughs> you know? Okay. If you want to win a hundred on Green Bay, mm-hmm. you got to bet three hundred sixty bucks. That's how big a favorite they are. That's what you got to risk on every hundred. So if you want two hundred on Green Bay, win two hundred, you got to bet seven hundred twenty dollars. <laughs> that's oh, thank you. that's called we're not supposed to lose this game. Right. That's what Vegas would tell you. Now, that is the highest total. There's some that are minus two ten, like Pittsburgh against Cleveland. The two sixty five Minnesota against Frisco. Minus 475, there is that game. That's New Orleans at Tampa Bay. So in other words, 475 bucks you have, if you want New Orleans uh, minus the nine and a half. I mean, want, not minus the nine and a half, just to win. You have to bet 475 bucks to win 100. That's a lot of money, isn't it? That's a now, lot of money. Now, on the other hand, if you think Tampa's going to beat them, you bet 100, you'll win 360. But you might as well burn your money. <laughs> burn say. your hundred. Yeah, I'm not going to touch it that. To, give it to Eldo for plumbing uh, businesses. Um, I like Chicago. Whoa! Plus the seven and a half. That's what I think, I like too. the ambush. Yes. Now, do you think they're going to win I'm the gonna game? I'm going to go 200. 200. Uh, Kansas City's my play. In fact, I'm going to go 300 that the Bears cover the seven and a half and possibly win. Wow. I just think uh, all the research I've done, there's no way Green Bay should be getting seven and a half. Don't forget. Aaron Rodgers has been hurt. Aaron Rodgers complained about his receivers. Mm -hmm. Green Bay's not going to change because they got a new coach in Chicago. They'll throw some new wrinkles. Here's what they don't have. And this is why I'm putting my eggs this first time. I never did this with Wanstead. I didn't regret it. I never did this with a lot of Bear coaches. I never regretted it. I'm going to jump in with Nagy that he has this team competing at the end of the game. I don't know who's going to win. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet Green Bay to win it all. I wouldn't bet. I'd bet the points. I'm taking the Chicago Bears plus seven and a half. So what I got is New York Giants plus three, four hundred jelly beans. Pats minus six and a half, four hundred jelly beans. Five hundred on Kansas City plus three and a half with Mahomes. And then I have three hundred on uh, the Chicago Bears getting seven and a half. I'm not doing anything for the Monday night football games. If I decide to, I'll put it up. With, on Twitter, uh, on the Bears Bar Room Network. Sounds good. And I got to tell you that Hart4803, he loves your picks, and he said he completes his thoughts here by saying Mike... That's has, bad news for me. <laughs> he says Mike has changed his mind on our Chicago Bears. So, yeah, I, I mean... For I, one game, I just told you oh, why. Yeah, I get you. Is it the strategy not to show him anything? Maybe this guy does something. Maybe the first play is a Statue of Liberty, and, and the halfback, Jordan Howard, throws a 50-yard touchdown we don't know 
<laughs> That's true. That's true. Now, let me ask you this. The, the, uh, win- I don't need any wise guys on chat board going with me. It scares me. <laughs> the win- Vegas has moved the win total from 6.5 to 7 for the Bears since they acquired Khalil Mack. So where are you with that? You want to give us any advice on whether we should Well, I think it's good. I think, look, if you bet the over, you should be encouraged. But you got to and, – and by the way, if you bet the over already, you got it at 6.5. Mm-hmm. So it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter. It stays at six and a half, that ticket. In other words, we talked last week about uh, David Kaplan buying the, the over at six and a half. It doesn't change. Right. So he's got a good deal there. Everybody seems to think that the Bears now are going to, like we've heard from other people, you know, go all the way and get into the playoffs, slow your roll. But you know what? It's a better position than they were. But, you know, the, the other 10 guys got to do the job. Great reaction in the chat room on your picks. Bears girl is in the chat room, and she says she's really... I love Bears girl. She looked so cute last night in Toronto. How about it? She was doing all these reports from the NFL kickoff. Nobody kick- works harder than Bears girl. You are right about that. She is a prize for us here at Bears Bar Room. She's a good ambassador, too, for the t- for, for Bears Bar Room. She not only knows her stuff, she's a good ambassador. Yes, she is. Hey, Mike, before we uh, move to... She met to some our- mongrel from Minnesota. Minnesota last night. <laughs> Get a Vikings jersey on. Looks like he's a homeless man. <laughs> Don't okay. all Vikings fans look that way? Um, Most John- of them do, including their mascot. <laughs> really? Um, Johnny Santucci wants you to go back to your notes on the Chargers Chiefs. He wants to know, uh, do you suggest the over total on that Chargers Chiefs game? I didn't give anything on the totals. I wouldn't touch the totals I uh, for the first game. Although don't needs to be made, and Johnny's probably does well. Look, I, I, look. If you don't think that I, I could go zero and four, just like I went four and one last week. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what? I sure. could go zero and four. It, 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 I, I don't care. What I'm going to care about is what I do at the end of the year. By the way, I want to thank Mark Potash, who I'm going to be doing my picks in the Sun Times. Oh, sure, uh, they're nice. in there today. Yes. I, I took Philadelphia. I tried to get Bears Bar Room, but they have a little space above you for your. For your name, mm-hmm. and, and it was too long, <laughs> so they had to go up north to north, which is automatic. Bears Bar Room, oh, anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so a member of Bears Bar Room is up in the Sun Times. I thank the Sun Times, and I thank Mark Potash. Uh, you'll be able to see my picks. I made those picks a couple days ago, so sometimes I switch a couple of those on Sunday morning if I decide to go a certain way with later information. So you know, take it with a grain of salt. We will uh, tweet out. And you any- can't pick the whole board. You can't pick no, the whole board. No. I get Bears Bar Room's getting exclusive stuff. Yes. Period. Wait. People, I get paid for this type of stuff. I'm a paid professional, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and we're very, very grateful for it. Aldo I- could have paid. Aldo could have had another room painted if he would have <laughs> just gone with me. <laughs> boy, oh boy, you ain't kidding. I'm going to start laying some money down on NFL action. Yeah, I'll probably go low and four, and you won't, we won't talk for a week. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. before, before we close this show, I want you to talk about... It's over about, already? Yeah, we're at 59 This, this one-hour stuff. Yeah. Wow. We, we're gonna, we pack it in, don't we? We, we do. We're going to go OT because I want you to talk about uh, one of your favorite mo- motion picture stars who passed away. Uh, this week, uh, the great Burt Reynolds. I love Burt Reynolds. And in the 70s, you had four or five powerhouse actors that were in their, not, well, some wasn't in their prime yet. You had Burt Reynolds, you had Sylvester Stallone, you had Jack Nicholson, uh, you had Clint Eastwood, you had Al Pacino. Those are five powerhouses, folks. Mm-hmm. You had the Godfather series. Mm-hmm. You, that's when movies, I mean, when people had ideas. And Burt Reynolds took the action pictures, did his own stunts, yep. always uh, uh, thought that it was petty. He, his heroes were Errol Flynn and, and guys like that uh, that he had read about. Uh, he thought, you know, his name was Buddy, and, and he thought Bobby Bowden knew his name because Bobby Bowden would call him Buddy all the time, but That's then he right. found out Bobby Bowden called everybody Buddy. So, um, but he said it was a good experience. He was a good football player, very fast, mm-hmm. very quick, and I saw the, la- uh, the last movie star, and it was uh, ri- written and uh, directed by Adam Rifkin. And then afterwards, I just gave him a, a kudos on Twitter. I said, it's the best movie uh, I've ever seen Burt Reynolds make. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. It's an autobiographical piece. His name's Vince Edwards. And uh, then I met Jeremy Morrison because of that, because they all thanked me profusely. They go, thanks, Mike. I mean, Adam Rifkin's this big director. And then I said, you know what? These guys might be okay to do a movie with. And then... 
One thing led to another, and that's how I met him, because of Burt Reynolds. Very sad day for Burt Reynolds fans. He had some bad turns in his career. Wasn't a Hollywood guy. Should have won uh, an Oscar for at least one movie. I thought he was great in Deliverance. Oh, yes. I really did, so I give him all the credit in the world, and God bless him. And you know what is interesting is that he turned down the role of uh, Michael Corleone in the Godfather movies. Could you? Uh, I'm really, glad he did that. Really? Why? I mean, we were. Because not... I think Pacino was fantastic. He was. He was. There's no. I don't. I think. I think the role that he turned down that he would have been as good as the actor who won the Oscar mm -hmm. was Cuckoo's Nest. One flew over oh, to Cuckoo's Nest. Absolutely. I, I... No doubt about it. Burt Reynolds was that type of guy. Mm -hmm. Nicholson really is. He's, he's, he plays happy. Burt Reynolds was happy. Mm. I think he turned that down. Stallone almost considered him in, as the sheriff instead of Brian Dennehy for um, uh, Rambo 1. I mm. think that was a mistake by Stallone. He admits it now. Mm. Even though Dennehy was good, and I love Brian Dennehy, it would have been fun to see Burt Reynolds chasing uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Mm. You know, uh, and, and Reynolds recently said that that famous Cosmopolitan magazine shoot where he was, I think he was naked smoking a cigar or something like that. He really regretted doing that photo because it was a I regretted him doing it because I tried that same pose. Somebody thought there was a dead fish on the beach. <laughs> well, my God, when he did that pose, I said, all right, I got some hair on my nipples. <laughs> You know? <laughs> well, he regretted it because he and said... And then my underarms, of course. But he regretted it because he was seen as a, a, as a sex creature. As a sex creature. And he said that it diverted attention away from the other actors in Deliverance because it came out around that time. And that none of those actors got Oscar uh, consideration. And I think he was right. You know, it, it created kind of a silly stir, you know, whether he should have done it and so forth. And it, it, it took away from the great movie that was Deliverance. He should have been nominated. Ned Beatty should have been nominated. Uh, that, that movie is one of the all-time great movies. If you have not seen it, watch Deliverance, but be prepared. It's a very disturbing movie. And there's scenes from it in the, in the last movie star, so you could check that off because uh, they, they put some of his scenes in Deliverance and in other movies with uh, Cannonball Run and uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, Jackie Gleason uh, is my one of my favorite mm -hmm. characters of all time, mm -hmm. and... He was fantastic as the sheriff. In fact, I watched those movies to see him more than I see Burt Reynolds. But there's no doubt that Burt Reynolds was just, uh, uh, he was a five-time, five straight years box office champ. Man. That was some heavy competition back then. He was, he was, he cleaned up. He was Tom Cruise before Tom Cruise, right? Yeah, you know what? I think uh, Tom Cruise cared. Yeah, Tom Cruise does his own stunts, too. Yes. I like Tom Cruise. I saw. I think that Burt Reynolds would have been great in American Made, just like Tom Cruise, but Tom Cruise was a great actor in that movie, and that's what sells the movie. Tom Cruise nailed that movie, and I have a lot more respect of, of, for Tom Cruise the more I watch his work than I used to. Yeah, I, uh, I saw the last mission. I love this. I could go. Let's go another hour. You want to go Come another on. hour? Everybody in the chat room is saying, go another hour, go another hour, but I can't because i got to go to the washroom. <laughs> Well, that's, that's something. You know what? You should have a can next to you at all times. You know what? I do. There's an old radio trick. The Folgers can, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Walter Winchell used to make it drink a lot of water before his show. And then when he talked real fast, and when he talked like this, Mr. and Mrs. Mayor and, and all the ships at sea, Mr. and Mrs. North, all the ships at sea, it's because... He had to go to the bathroom. If you saw the <laughs> autobiography on Winchell, he did that way because they were short. They were like three-minute shorts. He was the top guy in his game at that time. Awesome. You My, know, I better let you go because you're going to go all over the place. But before we go, why don't you give a shout-out again to our sponsors? Oh, my God. Pete Vrdoliak. Ed Vrdoliak. Vrdoliak Law Group. Vrdoliak Law Partners. Vrdoliak, if you need a lawyer. Vrdoliak. See, check out. Follow them. At Rodoliak Law Group, follow them. At, at Pete Rodoliak, I mean, you need a if you need a lawyer, trust me. The, these guys win. They got offices all over the country. Then you got Bet Chicago. Go to Bet Chicago One for the Twitter. Anything. I mean, they were keeping us up to date yesterday with the um, with the golf. You know, Tiger Woods yeah. minus nine right. first hit. I mean, they were I, they were up to date. They, they do a tremendous job. They're the next big thing. 
Hey, and I suggest uh, people go over to Vidoliac.com. They have a really cool feature there uh, that you click on. It says, do I have a case? Click here. And so you can answer some questions and they'll uh, right. consult with you. So it's a very, very cool uh, uh, website for anyone needing legal assistance. And our friends over at Bet Chicago just doing a great job of keeping us informed. And uh, Mike, again, you hit it out of the park. I am so happy. I think I did today. I think I had a two homer day with a double mixed in with a strikeout. And a pop-up, three for five. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where that strikeout came, but uh, I'll go back and listen to the show because it'll be out in podcast form. It really did, but I don't want to seem too egotistical. <laughs> well, you, um, know, you know me, Mister <laughs> Mister Mister Loki. <laughs> I'm your wingman. <laughs> hey, hey, listen to Barroom. Listen to Aldo. Listen to all the people. Listen to Shane. Listen to Little Nicky. Listen to Listen to Tooch. Listen Listen to Bear Girl. Listen to Doctor Phil. <laughs> Listen to Shaw, Shane, listen to, and listen to everybody, Aldo. Did I get them all? I think you did. <laughs> Great job, Mike. I, we'll see you next week. See you, buddy. All right. He's a beer bar washer.